Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're having another look at state machines. Uh, today we're going to look at polymorphic state transitions, which is a way to um, have more control of our transitions uh, in our state machines. So, uh, first of all, before we jump straight into this, let's have a quick refresher about state machines. Now, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go watch uh, my videos on state machines, starting with uh, the first one I made, Finite State Machines, which is a simple introduction to Finite State Machines. However, it has a couple issues. First of all, the technique outlined uh, really doesn't allow you to reuse your code easily, and it's also really poorly organized, which is why I later on introduced the idea of object state machines, where uh, states are actually introduced as separate objects and uh, this allows us to reuse our code much better. However, it still had a couple issues to do with organization of our actual variables, which is why I later again introduced the actor action model, which allows us to represent each of our different states as different actions, which are actually instances carrying out their own code. This allows us to keep our variables, our state specific variables separate from each other in different instances. This had also better code we use, better organization, less um, prone to problems due to name conflicts. Um, however, there is still uh, an issue and that is to do with common state. Imagine you had a rabbit and a turtle state machine. They both would wait uh, and move. However, they move in two different ways. Obviously, the rabbit would move faster than the turtle. So you would have a separate state, one for the turtle moving and one for the rabbit moving. However, the uh, awaiting state is exactly the same. They wait in the same way. So ideally, you would want a, a state machine like the one you see on screen here, where you have the, a single uh, await state for both the objects, and then separate moving states for each of our state machines. However, this isn't going to work because our moving state, our await state, sorry, doesn't really know what um, moving state to go to because the actual transition is really hard coded into that object, uh, regardless of what uh, state machine it's actually uh, being applied on. And so really, there, there was one solution before, and that was simply to duplicate your, uh, your, your wait state and have one for each of your different objects with its reference to the rabbit and turtle moving states respectively. But this isn't really a good option because you don't want to be rewriting the same code. You know, duplicating code is a bad idea. So instead, what you can do is make use of different transitions by storing the states uh, that you want to transition to inside variables. And inside the, uh, the state objects on transition, rather than just referring to the state directly, you can refer to the variable stored inside your state machine. So let's have a look at an example where uh, we're gonna look at the uh, rabbit and turtle example uh, using the actor action model as it uh, allows us to organize our variables a bit better. So first of all, let's have a look at the wait action. Now this wait action is the one that is the same for uh, each of our actors. Uh, so what it really is, is in the create event, a simple alarm, which is set to here 10 frames, but you should probably make that longer if you really want to see the effect. And uh, the target, which is the object it will be applied on, is set to no one. We then have a look at the alarm event where we essentially just check to see that our target really exists because we don't want to be referring to objects which don't exist. Uh, we then create the moving action by uh, the normal instant create layer. But as you can see, rather than referring directly to an object to create, we instead have a look inside the target object at the variable move action, which is a variable which will hold the um, the movement action that we want to create. We then set the target of that action to the same target as the wait action, and we can destroy the wait action as we no longer need it. Let's have a look at our first of the two move actions. That is going to be the move rabbit action to start off with. All we do is first set the target to no one, ignore the description, which is still set to the same as the old one. 
And then inside the step event, we simply increment our x variable by 10 inside our target object. The turtle object is much the same. Uh, we set our target to no one, and then inside our step event, we increment our x variable of our target, but by a slightly smaller amount, as a turtle moves more slowly than a rabbit. Now we can actually get to creating our different actors. So first of all, we have our rabbit actor. What we do here is instantiate that move action we had a look at inside our uh, await action. And we set it to move rabbit, which was the object, um, which was the, uh, well, rabbit moving action object. Uh, we then create the waiting uh, action the same way we did in our uh, tutorial on uh, the actor action model and set the target to this object. The turtle is essentially the same. All we change is the move action to be move turtle. Now remember move action is referred to inside our weight such that instead of creating uh, a fixed, um, a hard coded action, it will actually create the one stored inside the object. So the result is that our two objects will wait the same amount of time as they're using the same uh, object as action, and it will then move at two different speeds as they have two different um, actions for movement. So let's have a look at how we can actually take this idea further. So you could of course use decision trees instead of just a plain um, uh, object reference. So different objects could use different decision trees to choose what um, state to change to. And you could also completely abstract away the actor that way. You could have a single actor object and just change its variables to change what states it will use. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. As you can see, it is a very useful tool to get your different actors to act differently, yet to retain the same common states. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give a like and subscribe for more. Hit that bell icon if you want notifications. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.